complete dumb, complete dumb luck. So I'm working on a totally different project, uh, and I come across a photo. I'm going to show it to you. I come across a photo, this photo right here. Can you zoom in on that? And so I see this photo, and it's by a man named Ed Westcott. He was the official photographer in Oak Ridge, Tennessee during World War II. And at first I just liked the photo as an old photo, but I was kind of looking at how young the women were in contrast to these crazy machines and this long sort of gauntlet of technology. The text accompanying the photo said something along the lines of, these young women, many of them recent high school graduates from rural Tennessee, are helping enrich uranium for the world's first atomic bomb, only they don't know that at the time. And I'd never heard about this before. And it turned out that everyone's view of the Manhattan Project was very similar to what mine had been, which was it was all about the Enrico Fermis and the Robert Oppenheimers and the Gen General Groveses, and that the story was really always told from kind of a top-down sort of perspective. And I thought, well, you know, what does the Manhattan Project look like through her eyes, that girl in that photo? And then I realized it was only two hours away by car, so I just got in my car and went over there and started stalking octogenarians. It was the first time for a lot of them to really talk in such great detail about their experiences in Oak Ridge during World War II. I got lucky in that once I met one person, they would introduce me to two more, three more, uh, invite me to a coffee, I'd go to historic preservation meetings, things of that nature. What was interesting is the first time I would talk to these women, a lot of them, their initial reaction was, oh, you don't want to talk to me. I don't know anything. I didn't know anything. So they really kind of devalued their own experience just because they weren't in that special club of people who knew what was going on, you know, from the get. Once you got them talking, it seemed to me they were really kind of, you know, anxious and relieved to be able to talk um, to such great extent about what was a very unique moment in their lives. Not just because they were working on the Manhattan Project, but also just because they had survived World War II. I keep billboards and, or rather, you know, uh, what do you call them? Bulletin boards up. And I have um, visual things that kind of remind me of the story. I have some World War II images, some pictures that Ed Westcott did hang up around my office. Um, on one part of my desk are, uh, is my Wonder Woman Pez and my Statue of Liberty M&M dispenser. These are very important because uh, I have to stay happy and upbeat while I'm working. I do a lot of mind mind mapping kind of stuff, like uh, visual brainstorming, either with post-its or on paper. When I actually get down to uh, digital outlining and organizing everything, I am uh, I am an evangelist for Scrivener. I use it to keep everything from photos I find online to websites to scans of documents I got at the National Archives to map. Scrivener, I, I can't say enough about Scrivener. I love it. Sometimes I like to go out for coffee in the morning because I can walk and clear my head and that's when I might sit and have coffee in the coffee shop and do some stuff by hand. Just kind of a, you know, sort of a brain dump by hand. Um, I have to remember to eat during the day, It's uh, otherwise it ends up being 3 or 4 o'clock and I'm very angry and very, uh, and I make bad food choices at that point if I've done that. I did like for this particular book, there was a lot of really, um, there was a lot of really fun music from that period of history and, you know, if I was feeling myself getting a little, you know, I, I would turn on some Andrew Sisters or some, you know, Johnny Mercer or, you know, whoever else I could, uh, I could find to kind of, you know, sort of pick me up and put me back in that frame of mind and put me back in that mood. Oh, I can't, I can't say enough about if, how, how important your life partner is if you do this for a living. Um, my poor, long-suffering husband, <laughs> who also happens to be uh, an author and a journalist, that is a godsend because we have this ability to be very hard on each other, but in the kindest possible way because we're both so invested in each other's success. It's a huge asset to have him there. And I, I lucked out in the hubby department in that respect.